Good evening, this is the Oscar expert here with Brother Bro. It's time to predict the BAFTA nominations. The BAFTAs are tomorrow, and we will be reacting, but we will be predicting now. I mean, this is the second year that the BAFTAs kind of rework their voting system. We have long lists for every single category. You gotta pick out of those long lists of 15 or 20. And of course, we have the categories that are juried, that are picked by a select group of six to 12 jurors. Each juried category has a different jury, I believe. These categories last year were bonkers unpredictable and they will probably be very unpredictable this year. Nearly everything that's shortlisted in the jury categories has like a shot at getting a nomination because the point of the jury is also that they see every single movie, whereas other voters, like, you can't really keep track of them to see everything. The juries were also appointed because they didn't want a result that was undiverse. And last year, we certainly did not have an undiverse set of nominees, that's for sure. So, you know, when we're trying to predict this year based off last year, we're gonna predict a diverse lineup. All within reason of what we assume is, like, the jury's taste. But this year, the rules are different in that the top two selections when people vote for the long lists are going to make it into the nomination no matter what. So the jury is actually picking only four out of six of the slots. So it will look more similar to the Oscars, but it will still be very different. So briefly, let's just take a look at the amount of nominations some of these movies got, you know, long list nominations. We got West Side Story, Don't Look Up, 15 long list nominations. How much does this say? Does this say that Don't Look Up will get into Best Picture? I mean, last year there were a couple movies like St. Maude, which got something like 11 shortlist nominations and only showed up in those like special British categories. But we will be referencing the amount of nominations some of these movies get because it will be important to say like, oh, maybe how much does the body as a whole like this movie? On to Best Film, which is not a juried category. It's decided by the entire BAFTA community. The three locks here, we got Power of the Dog, Belfast, and Dune. Is Belfast gonna be power of the dog because it's British? Maybe? I don't know. And then West Side Story, you know, that seems pretty safe. 15 long list nominations, right? I mean, Belfast had 14, Power of the Dog had 14. All the Best Picture nominees last year had over 10. I assume they're gonna go for Dune. Absolutely. And they liked Blade Runner a little bit more than the Oscars did. I don't know if I should put Don't Look Up in the last slot because obviously the 15 long list nominations is nothing to scoff at. But they didn't nominate Vice. They didn't nominate Vice. Yeah, that's pretty high for a movie that's so divisive. I really think we ought to be looking at Coda. I don't know if Coda and maybe would Licorice get Pizza in the five. Maybe Licorice Pizza would. I mean, that seems I like... I think Coda might be like the surprise. Because I don't see a British film in here that could surprise, except for maybe No Time to Die. I mean, Coda has seven long list nominations. Does it say something that Marley Matlin wasn't on the short list? Like, they didn't embrace it to the fullest extent, you know what I mean? I don't know. Whereas Don't Look Up and Licorice Pizza were probably embraced to nearly the fullest extent. Yeah, what if No Time to Die cracks it? I mean, last year they nominated the shit out of the Mauritanian. Actually, the reason I will not predict No Time to Die is because Skyfall and Casino Royale didn't make the five, and that's ah. it for me. Could King Richard get in there? They're not gonna I care. know you think they're not gonna like it as much, but maybe that's like the surprise. I don't think it's so. It's like King Richard I really, really well. Think so. Why not? King Richard didn't even get on the editing shortlist. Licorice Pizza has 11 long list nominations. That's... Not bad. It's pretty good. Cooper Hoffman's there. That's tough. Then I think it is between those two. DGA5. Just say it. It's like cheating to have the short list give you, you know, a hint. All right, moving on to director. This is an all jury category, okay? This is not like the acting categories where two of the top picks from the long list remain no matter what. The jury is picking every single nominee here. The power of the dog is the only guarantee. Everything else, mm. we have no idea. You'd be a fool, I think, to not predict Drive My Car, though. Because, of course, they'll nominate that, right? Like, that, that's mm. got to be, like, their taste. Yeah, I think, I mean, the jury's going to have a much more sophisticated taste. And they're going to weigh the movies evenly, which is the good thing about the jury. So I think Drive My Car is a pretty safe bet. And no, I don't think that will automatically mean it's getting director of the Academy Awards. I think you agree that... We're going to look out for a screenplay nomination. That's going to be actually more important because that's an unjuried category. That would show that there's some love for Drive My Car. Number three, we're going with Julia DeCorno for Teton. Now, of yeah. course, this is like a wish list for me. Of course it is. But like they would do that probably. They, they might do. I mean, they might I think not. if they're being fair, they have to recognize that Teton was fucking amazingly directed. I think they're going to go there with Teton. I also have First Cow. Now this may seem strange because the movie came out last goddamn year and I don't know why it's here, but if we remember, Clemency also came out the year prior, but was eligible for the next year at BAFTA, and the jury said, we like Alfred Woodard. If First Cow was out this year, everyone would be predicting it, no? 
if First Cow was like a general contender yeah. this year, everyone would be predicting it for the BAFTA nomination, right? Probably. I think probably. So I'm kind of leaning towards predicting it for that reason. Beyond the top two, we're just making guesses at it. I mean, you, you might as well put them in a hat. After Love was the winner of Best Director at the British Independent Film Awards. The winner of the British Independent Film Award last year did not get nominated, but... Maybe that'll be different this year. In the acting categories, those winners certainly translated. After Love is one of three movies that we can see is shortlisted quite a lot that is like a British independent film. It's not a bad pick. I am wondering though if they go for something like Dune or Belfast. They might be like, okay, we've done like a good job nominating the more indie ones. Like maybe we just got to give it to one of the more mainstream picks like Dune or Belfast. I think Dune has the better shot. It's more of an obvious directing achievement. Yeah, and like if the BAFTA were normal, Dune would be like number two for director. They might like Villeneuve. So it's kind of hard to say he's not on there. And yet I have Zola. This is mm. like the biggest wild card of all. I don't know if I'm going to cower out and change it on Gold Derby at the last minute. I mean, there's a lot of other good options here too. Souvenir Part 2 could easily see them going for that. Passing. Maybe they even nominate Paul Sorrentino for The Hand of God. Who knows? Honestly, I feel like any female directed film here has a decent shot. I could see Happening, Lost Daughter, Petite Maman, like all these movies. It's weird that Belfast and West Side Story, Licorice Pizza, some of the best picture nominees we're predicting are like way down here but that's how this jury is gonna operate i think yeah i don't know if belfast is that low but i could concede and not have it in the top six i like the top three i'll say that i don't know what else you're supposed to do another way you could arrange this list is just saying you know let's put dune and belfast in there and hope that maybe one of those gets in and then go for like first cow or after love. You could arrange it in many different ways, but I think perhaps we just have to settle on something. Zola is really my my long shot that if it comes true, I will be very proud of myself. Yeah. It's the only woman of color on the list. Okay. I mean, yeah, there just you go. Just a fact that I'm going to put out there. Also not a movie short on style, that's for sure. But of course, they could go for pretty much anything that's not like, don't look up in King Richard. In Best Actress, this is a category, and along with all the other categories, where the top two long list picks that were decided by BAFTA voters as a whole stay in. If this category was all jury, Nicole Kidman would not be showing up here, right? But if Nicole Kidman shows up here, we know that she was top two. If Lady yep. Gaga shows up here, if Jessica Chastain shows up here, we know they were top two. You yeah, because I just don't think the jury would pick them, yeah. It's not that sophisticated taste enough. So Nicole Kidman is on here because I do think that maybe she's top two, right? I'm maybe, not even maybe? convinced she's top two. I agree, but like someone's got to be top two. Who's top two? I wouldn't be shocked if Kristen Stewart were top two here, even though she didn't do well at the SAG. I also think Olivia Coleman could be top two. I think they might both be picks from the regular voting body, or they might be jury saves. Yeah, but Olivia Coleman wasn't even nominated for The Father, so you can't even say that. Oh, that's weird, actually. Everybody's snubbable. Yeah. A lot of people don't think Kristen Stewart's getting in, and here's everything I have to say about that. Okay, first of all, last year, all the people who were sweeping critics awards got in at the BAFTAs, right? Francis McDormand, Bakalova, Ye Jung Yoon, Paul Racy, Daniel Kaluuya, okay? The only one who came close to sweeping critics awards without getting in was Carrie Mulligan. Kristen Stewart is freaking clean sweeping, clean sweeping critics awards. And then your argument is, well, the BAFTA, they're going to be attached to the monarchy and they don't like movies that are critical of the royal family. I call BS. I call BS on that. Here's why I call BS on it. This jury, probably very fucking liberal, right? We can assume that. Yeah. Can't we? So, absolutely. Wouldn't we say that if you're more liberal, you probably think the royal family's like racist, right? You yeah. probably don't like the royal family. I bet that's more of like a conservative thing to be simping for the royal family, okay? And this jury, like, why would they care? I don't think they do care. So, I do have Kristen Stewart on here. She's obviously the critic's pick. It's very, very obvious that that is Kristen Stewart. And it seems to be across the board, if you have this kind of taste for indie films, you're going to nominate K. Stu. They're going to nominate Kristen Stewart, I really do think. It was very weakly long-listed. She's probably not going to be in the top two. It's, it's, I think it's going to be a jury thing if she gets in. And it's still if. Everybody's if. I don't even know if I have to keep saying that. I'm really curious if Nicole Kidman gets in here. Because then we'll know, again, that it right. is top two. Exactly. Because I don't think jury would go for that. Like, if Lady Gaga gets in, I'll be like, oh my god, should I predict Lady Gaga for the SAG? Like, if Lady Gaga yeah. got in and Kidman didn't <laughs> get in, I'd be like, oh my god. And then you'd be like, well, shit, is Olivia Coleman winning the BAFTA if she doesn't have this competition. It's going to be a whole thing. I think this is the category where you can most likely tell who is the top two. 
or so it seems. Other than that, I have two people who I'm very confident in. Joanna Scanlon for After Love. She won the British Independent Film Award and she is on the shortlist, which means I put her in. That was a <laughs> foolproof thing to do last year. If they won the British Independent Film Award, you put them on, you'd get it right. The other person I'm very confident in is Tessa Thompson. It just is going to happen. She's like a lock. Like, is that weird to say that Tessa Thompson's a lock for passing? She's a lock. Not really. I think that, I think critics groups really like Tessa Thompson this year. And as we said before, like you have to kind of take into account if the lineup will be diverse. And we still are not predicting that diverse of a lineup here because the three women of color in this category are Tessa Thompson, Jennifer Hudson, Rachel Zegler. Does it seem like respect and Rachel Zegler's performance are like the jury's thing? Like not as much, not as much. Yeah. And then there's Claire Rushbrook, who was also nominated at the British Independent Film Award, probably was the runner up to Joanna Scanlon. Spoiler alert, we're predicting her co-star to be nominated in Best Actor. To me, it's between her and Renate Reinsva for this last slot. A lot of people on Gold Derby seem pretty convinced that it's Reinsva, just because it kind of makes sense with maybe the jury's taste. You could make a case for a lot of these people to get nominated. I mean, even like Alana Haim, I think yeah. there's something there. Jennifer Lawrence, you cannot make the case for. True, Jennifer Lawrence will not happen. Contrary to what I just that's, said. That's the only one will that not happen. can't happen. Lead actor. Let's break it down. Like, who do we think that the top two could be on the long list? I think Benedict Cumberbatch is going to be one of the top two. And even if he wasn't, he'd get jury saved, which makes him a lock. So mm -hmm. he's number one. And I think that next in line would either be Will Smith or Andrew Garfield. If Will Smith isn't here, Benedict's taking this in a cakewalk and he's probably taking the Oscar too. He might be taking the Oscar anyway, but that would be proof. If Andrew Garfield's here, it'll probably be because he was on the top two, but I could also see maybe the jury saving him because that was a very critically acclaimed performance. So I have those three on here to be safe. You cover your yeah. bases. You're going to get two out of three of them. I mean, even if you're you're thinking 50-50, it's still worth putting someone on. If you get four out of five in any of these jury categories, you did pretty good. You did a pretty good job, son. At number two is Adil Akhtar. <laughs> like, number two. I, that's yeah. how confident I feel that Adil Akhtar would win. Because, again... He won the British Independent Film Award. It puts you right up there. We got Denzel Washington in Macbeth. I don't think it's guaranteed, but I think that there's a good chance. Now, Stephen Graham, he was in one of the British independent films that they liked quite a bit. Yep, he was in Boiling Point. It's a one-take movie, and he's playing a sort of like Chef Ramsay-ish guy. Earned great reviews for it. Very critically acclaimed performance. I could see them going for it. I think he's a pretty good bet. Oh, so interestingly, you don't really think that the jury would save Will Smith. I kind of get it. They, they, I don't know if they would or not. Yeah, I don't I know if they would or not. And then we have Mahershala Ali, who I think could be a potential jury pick. I also think Peter Dinklage could show up with the jury. Riz Ahmed for Encounters. I don't really think that that would happen, but that could be like a very rando weird thing for them to do. And then I don't feel so confident about everybody from 11 down. I don't really think that they have as good of shots. Yeah. Even Daniel Craig, I don't think he would be saved by the jury. No. We do have four out of five of the predicted Oscar nominees here, but you know, I think we're kind of covering bases. We're predicting a couple of the British independent film ones and then we're just doing, the, you know, I think we'll get three out of five at least. Yeah, I think this one looks pretty solid from number one to eight. Although I would love to see the jury save Joaquin Phoenix. You might get your wish with uh, another category that that film is shortlisted. Oh yeah, I know. Coming up soon. Supporting actress. My predictions for this actually look really safe. And I'm kind of okay with them that way. I'm kind of okay with it. Yeah, because supporting actress is like the most diverse category right now, I think. I mean, this lineup, as unrisky as it is, is four out of six people of color. Ariana DeBose, probably a top two thing. Who else is a top two thing? I think Katrina Balfe might be a top two thing. Either her or Kirsten Dunst. If Katrina Balfe is not top two, I don't think she'll be saved by the jury. I'm not certain about that because she is British and she's in a very British film. The jury is gonna save Ruth Nega, I think for sure. I think the jury is gonna get Vinette Robinson in here for sure too. She won the Biffa. Again, another yep. one. Yeah, um, yeah, we're just predicting everybody who won that and then is shortlisted. Kirsten Dunst, I think if she didn't make top two, the jury could save her. They yeah. seem like they're gonna like Power of the Dog. They're, they're basically like the a dog. critics organization. And it's fun to keep Kirsten Dunst in because she's not really part of the club. Like, I think a lot of this is about making sure that there's not a club, which I actually like that goal. And Kirsten Dunst, the whole narrative behind her is that she hasn't really been welcome in the Hollywood club yet. And then we have Anjanu Ellis. A lot of people are doubting this on Gold Derby and around there. I guess we're kind of predicting her as a jury pick because I don't think she'd be top two. There's this kind of perception that maybe BAFTA would be less receptive to King Richard, which I, I kind of agree that. with. Like in a normal year, that's the kind of movie they would under nominate. 
I mean, Anshin Ruelos did really well with critics, so it's not like she's not a critics pick either. It's it's hard to think about who else could get in. Like, what does Gold Derby think is going to happen? I think Anne they Dowd? think Jesse Buckley's in. Yeah, I could see Jesse Buckley, and I do think Anne Dowd would have a chance here, and that's not hopeless speculation, because people who see Mass, they know. They fucking know. Jesse Buckley is also British, and her nomination for Wild yeah. Rose, like, she's a BAFTA nominee. I, th- I think these three are probably duking it out maybe for that third slot. You like Catherine Hunter up there? Yeah, they could maybe go for her. I feel like they would do something very weird and unconventional like that. I hope they save Ann Dowd. I feel like that's what the category is for in a way, is saving Ann Dowd in mass. Like, I could take a risk. I see a lot of people putting Catherine Hunter and Jesse Buckley in there, and I get it. But I think that my top six is very safe. I feel safe and secure about getting maybe four of them, which would be great. Supporting actor. I would definitely assume that either Cody Smith McPhee, Troy Kotzer, or Kieran Hines, two of them will make up the top two from the long list, right? Yeah, Cody Smith McPhee is an absolute lock, like any way you cut it. We don't know that Troy Kotzer is a front runner yet. Like, I know a lot of people are declaring him that. He has not won a major award yet. I can also see, though, that if they weren't top two, the jury saving, like, yep. any one of these three people. Yeah. I definitely don't think both the Belfast boys will get in. And I think if anyone, I agree. Kieran Hines. And then four and five, we got Benicio Del Toro for The French Dispatch and David Alvarez for West Side Story. Look, there are not a lot of people of color shortlisted in this category. There are two. And we're just going to predict both of them. I don't know how else to put that. I know it's like probably a little crude to put it that way, but also look at some of these people. Like they're not gonna go for Bradley Cooper, Jared Leto, Al Pacino, Andrew Garfield, and Eyes of Tammy right. Faye. The, like, the other thing here is that these performances seem more up the alley of like a snobby or like jury person versus a lot of these people towards the bottom of the list. Like there's no way the jury would go for them. It yeah. makes like less sense. Jesse Plemons could be in there though. I could see that maybe happening. It could be. And if Jamie Dornan got in, I would think, oh, wow, like the people voted for him. And then number six is Woody Norman. Why is Woody Norman number six? Because again, if you look at like a lot of these people under six, they don't seem like the jury would quite go for them. They're not like quite up the jury's alley. Like they're not going to nominate Mike Feist, Mark Rylance, J.K. Simmons. They're not going to do that. And then there's Woody Norman, whose performance is excellent. And by the way... Last year, a child was nominated in every category. Yep. Well, that's because Rocks was a thing. It's also uh, Alan Kim. Well, not Best Actor, but all the Everything other categories. Else. They nominated children. They will well, nominate well, children. Oh, yeah, and then Brit- Woody Norman's British. There you go. I think this and Supporting Actress, I feel pretty good about getting five out of six, which is odd. No, you but... don't. No way. Supporting Actress? Yeah, I do. I'm not gonna, You're not going to get five out of six in any of these I think categories. you're going to get five out of six somewhere. I think be lucky. you're going to get five out of six somewhere. I'd be a so lucky and privileged too. And then we have the best casting category, which is not really like an ensemble category. I mean, the last two years, one of them jury, one of them not. They only nominated one SAG ensemble movie. So that's not actually a great thing to go off of. Last year, they did Rocks and Calm with Horses. This year, the two British independent films on the list are After Love and Boiling Point. We will be predicting both of them. The jury will probably like Power of the Dog, so we're going with Power of the Dog. Going with Belfast. I think Coda would get in because they cast real deaf actors. If the casting category is kind of about like, yeah, cast the right people for the right roles. I mean, how would you not put Coda in? Like, that is a form of diversity. I don't know. I mean, this one's a little harder to predict. Like, they could do West Side Story. They could do King Richard. Don't look up. I feel like maybe they'll hate that movie, but... Who knows? Maybe not. I think of them as being critics. Critics are pretty mixed about Don't Look Up. Yeah, I'm okay with this five. I'm all right with it. Yeah. Juried categories, no more. Original screenplay. The top four is easily Belfast, Licorice Pizza, Don't Look Up, Being the Ricardos. Now, some people might doubt that Being the Ricardos is big here, but Aaron Sorkin's been nominated for plenty of BAFTAs. He got nominated for Steve Jobs, Molly's Game, Trial of Chicago 7. No reason to doubt him here, really. A big perception that I kind of agree with is that King Richard will miss here. As I was saying, that's kind of the movie that maybe they don't embrace as heavily. If King Richard misses, I can see two movies with a good shot to take its place. French Dispatch, which just got a WGA nomination, I could see that happening. And then maybe After Love gets in, because last year they did take some risks in screenplay. Rocks was there. The Dig was there. After Love is like the British movie this year that could break out into other categories. It is the only one in original screenplay that's on this list. But here's the thing. It's not a jury category. Yeah, but they put After Love in like a ton of categories. It's in director. 
But it ain't in picture, buddy. Rocks was not in the shortlist last year for best film. But Rocks was the only screenplay nominee in both categories that was not longlisted in best picture. So it's still against the odds, I think, for it to get in. French Dispatch, though? Eh? If we're gonna decide not to go with King Richard, as long as you're comfortable with that, are you comfortable with that? Not all the way, but... I don't know why they would hate it. Like, I guess they didn't nominate it for editing and that's it. Denzel Washington has never been nominated for BAFTA, let's just say that. They why have... are you talking about Denzel Washington? So, We're talking about King Richard. They nominated Black Panther for like almost nothing. What I'm saying here is that some there's kind of a reason they appointed the jury. I don't know though. They sometimes underappreciate those kind of movies. That's all I'm saying. What about One Night in Miami and Ma Rainey? Did Ma Rainey was not nominated for screenplay. Sure, I guess. I mean, King Richard's pretty palatable, but okay. Everything that got nominated for screenplay was very heavily shortlisted last time. That's why I put French Dispatch. And I don't think any movie is quite as huge as Rocks was. Like, Rocks was big. Yeah, that's uh, this is fine. Yeah, this is fine. Adapted screenplay? It seems a little too easy to go with the top five, and yet I might do that. Power of the Dog, of course, is in there. Coda, Dune. Dune's definitely in there, by the way. If you doubt it, don't doubt oh, it. Oh, wow. Lost Daughter? I was thinking maybe that's not in there, but it performed really well on the long list, so I don't think there's a reason to doubt it. And then West Side Story? I could see that miss. I could see it missing. I mean, West Side Story only missed the Golden Globe, but that was where the categories were combined. I feel like it took a hit somewhere else. Why it took a hit with ASC and Eddie. Yeah, okay, so it's taken a couple of hits along the way. I could see them exchanging Drive My Car for West Side Story. But here's why I probably won't predict Drive My Car, because it wasn't long listed in Best Film. They nominated another round last time, but another round was long listed in Best Film. You know, a lot of people are expecting that this is where Drive My Car is going to show some strength. But maybe it won't. Maybe it just won't. That's fair. I think this is a good top five. I also wonder, can Tick Tick Boom show some strength here? I mean, it's rare that they nominate musicals for screenplay, but it's also rare that there's a musical that's as big of a contender as West Side Story. Look, if we see Drive My Car nominated here, that is a good sign that it could get some attention at the Oscars and screenplay. Oh, yeah. Or maybe director. Cinematography. It's the top five, but we don't need to give an explanation. It's just too easy. Like they're not gonna deter from this. They don't They don't even ni like Nightmare Alley very much on the long list. Like they could have nominated that a lot on the long list. They didn't. So I don't think that's gonna do what it did at the ASC. No Time to Die, I guess could be a dark horse because when they like a Bond film, like Skyfall and Casino Royale, they'll nominate it more than the Oscars will. But I just can't take anything out. I mean, Nightmare Alley or T No Time to Die could exchange, but I don't know what it would be for, so I wouldn't. Costume design, we got Corella, Dune, West Side Story, House of Gucci, and Cyrano. This seems like the pretty easy five to pick. Again, Nightmare Alley could get the Oscar, but they didn't shortlist it enough where I think that that's gonna happen here. I could see them doing Last Night in Soho. That got a lot of long list nominations, but there are movies like St. Maud that get a lot of nominations and don't actually get into these categories. With Cyrano, they usually really like Joe Wright. They nominated the shit out of Darkest Hour. It's also in a British film, technically. House of Gucci is also technically a British film. Maybe that helped to get so many nominations. They actually nominated Cyrano in a good amount of categories. Also, I kind of expect Cyrano might show up at the Oscars and this is like the confirmation of that that I'm kind of waiting for. And I feel like I'm going to get that confirmation here. Yeah, people are really concerned about the release date though. Yeah, I'd be more concerned for Dinklage, but you know, they have their ways of getting the movie in front of Academy voters. It doesn't necessarily have to come out in theaters. We saw that with The Father. Yeah, I don't know if movies like you know, Coda ever came out or if they were just screened and put in front of everybody really well. Spencer just abysmal on the shortlist. Like didn't even get cinematography. It's disgusting. Mm. Disgusting. Yeah, that might get goose egged at the Baptist. It, 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 it could. I think lead actress is the most likely. With editing, we've got Dune, Power of the Dog, Belfast, and No Time to Die. And I feel pretty good about all those. No Time to Die just got an Eddie nomination. Now, I, I may not be predicting that for the Oscar, but I sure am predicting it for the BAFTA. I sure am. And then the fifth slot to me is like West Side Story, maybe Tick, Tick, Boom, but it'd be kind of weird if they went for Tick, Tick, Boom over West Side Story. Mm -hmm. West Side Story missing the Eddie nomination makes people think it's vulnerable in editing. Maybe it is. Yeah. Will it still be nominated at the BAFTAs, but be vulnerable at the Oscars, maybe? Summer of Soul, you know, they have nominated documentaries and editing before. They're less afraid to do that, so they could go there. I could also see Last Night in Soho pulling off a random nomination or even Licorice Pizza. I also really wonder if Don't Look Up could show up here. Don't Look Up was in the comedy category at the Eddies, so we don't actually really know how it fares when it's put in the same pot. And we'll find out here. 
if Don't Look Up actually is getting an editing nomination at the Oscars after all, and maybe it is. Makeup and hair, we got House of Gucci, Tammy Faye, Dune, those are the top three for the Oscar, very, very obvious. We have No Time to Die, shortlisted at the Oscars. Again, you know, it's gonna be a little bit heavier nominated at the BAFTAs than anywhere else. And Cruella, why is Coming to America not here? Because that's the Oscars thing that they're gonna do. The BAFTAs are not the ones who nominated Jackass, Border, Man Called Ove, the 100-year-old man who jumped out the window. That's the Oscars business, and Coming to America is gonna join that club. But I don't know if it's gonna show up here. For original score, the really only two locks are Dune and Power of the Dog. I think French Dispatch and Don't Look Up look pretty good considering how well they were longlisted. And then it's that last slide. It's like, are we gonna go for Spencer? Because they could still, they could go for Spencer. They could still go for Spencer. I, I've, I've been too beaten. I've been too pummeled by the snubs. I wouldn't predict Spencer here. I kind of agree. And they also have an excuse to say, well, I'm nominating Greenwood for Power of the Dog. But here's the thing. There's not that many picks here yeah. that make more sense. I just don't know what else. So maybe No Time to Die? Like it's Hans Zimmer. Some people have complimented the I score, but sense. I don't think that people think it's like the best thing Hans Zimmer has done. But I think that that is a good pick because I don't want to predict Spencer and I don't want to predict anything else. Lewis Wayne had a very good score, but it would still be quite a reach for them to go there. Production design, also a little bit mystified about what to do here with that last couple slots. I think Dune, West Side Story, French Dispatch are totally in. Nightmare Alley, I do think is gonna show up here because that's been very strong in production design, even if not anywhere else. And then the fifth slot, the reason I have no time to die is because Skyfall and Casino Royale both got this nomination without being big contenders in production design elsewhere. They didn't get like Critics Choice or anything like that. They got what this movie got, which is a contemporary Art Directors Guild nomination. So that's my justification for having that at five. Belfast is also kind of a strong contender here. If it misses this, that's kind of a nail in the coffin, to be honest. The hit that Belfast took was that at the Production Designers Guild, it was not nominated in oh, favor yeah. of Licorice Pizza and Tragedy of Macbeth. Yeah, you think they'd be cool and nominate Macbeth for more than just actor and cinematography? They might be cool and nominate Macbeth for more than that. Cyrano also is possible. I think that's also a possibility. Yeah, if Licorice Pizza shows up here, very strong, like a Guild and a BAFTA. I wouldn't expect it though. I like your top five. Once again, you know, I agree with you here. Mm. In visual effects, of course, Dune is winning. And then there's Shang-Chi, which is doing pretty well. The BAFTAs are pretty similar to the Oscars here. Like they'll nominate the big blockbuster fair. We also got Matrix here. We got No Time to Die, which has Critics' Choice and a VES nomination. And then there's Eternals. I think Eternals <laughs> might be it. This is actually five out of six of the VES nominees. Just Spider-Man's not there because it's not eligible. It almost makes it easy. Like, it's kind of a no-brainer if you got like the top five visual effects society movies right here. Yeah, this is good. I think the whole, the vibe of the BAFTAs is gonna be like, in the text, we're gonna be like, yup, 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 yup. And then acting and director, it's like, ah! Unless they go for like, some random thing a lot. They over nominate they, they something that. like Last Night in Soho. The Dig got way too many nominations last year. Yeah, what if they do that with Last Night in Soho? They, they could. I am like a little weary of Last Night in Soho showing up in a couple categories. Yeah, because you're barely predicting it for anything. So for sound, we know for a fact that Dune and No Time to Die are locked in in this category. And then West Side Story seems pretty good. I think that Belfast and Power of the Dog will also get in. They nominated Nomadland last year. Nomadland, Power of the Dog, same sort of thing. I don't know if Power of the Dog is going to get nominated for the Oscar, but it was shortlisted, which is a pretty big deal. And so that's my top five. Or maybe they'll nominate like Matrix or something. This will be telling for the Oscar five too, I think. It just shows how much they love fucking Power of the Dog. We're predicting Tick, Tick, Boom for just best actor, but maybe it'll squeeze into either sound or editing or screenplay. And then we're onto the British categories. We got Outstanding British Film. This is a half juried category. So the top five will be decided by the voting body as a whole. And then the rest is the jury. Belfast, No Time to Die, Biggest Locks. After Love, Ali and Ava, Boiling Point, definitely getting in. Jury's gonna make sure of that. Cyrano, Last Night in Soho, Passing. House of Gucci, mm. movies that did really well on the long list. Spencer could get fucking snubbed from here. That would be really insane, but it could happen. Oh, this is 10 nominations, right? I okay, so the top that. nine is easy. Benediction could be a jury thing. Weirdly enough, I'm gonna say no to Spencer. I don't know, I don't understand how, but sure. I 
Maybe you want to put the Duke in. I don't know, we'll just go with the Duke. We'll get nine out of 10, it's okay. Outstanding debut by a British writer, director. Once again, we gotta go with After Love and Boiling Point. They're our best buddies today. Actually, I'm going on with like the top five that I've heard of. That's my strategy here. Passing Harder They Fall Sensor. I ain't heard of any of the other ones and I'm pretty sure like half of them are docs and that's my strategy and I, I don't know how else to do it. It's oh, also nice. a juried category, so I'm not gonna scrutinize over this one. They could do anything. And we got film not in the English language. Pretty easy top five here, pretty easy. Drive My Car, The Hand of God Will Surely Get In. That movie was actually pretty nicely shortlisted. That was pretty good long listed. Some people actually think that that could overperform and get screenplay or something or even director. Because it was, it was on more long lists than, actually, I think all these movies in this category, including Drive My Car. Worst Person in the World will get it. A Hero and Flea. However, I do think they could save Teton. Teton was listed in Director and Editing. Very good. Is that enough? I don't know if it's enough, but it was very good. I did not see Flea or A Hero listed in those categories. Well, the Oscars didn't even think it was top 20. I think it's number six. That's all I can say to you. Might they snub Flea? But if I had to predict Teton, Flea I'd Flea is sympathetic Flea. to refugees and it's a problem over there. I just can't burn myself by predicting Teton again. I really can't do that. Yeah, I think it could get in though. We got documentary Summer of Soul on the editing long list. That could win. I think it's gonna win here. I think it's gonna win really? here. Really? I kind of do. Over the rescue, really. Flea, the Sparks Brothers, Edgar Wright. He's having a big year, clearly. I think they'll go with that one. Very British. Uh, also very popular. And then for the fifth slot, we had Velvet Underground. This is the top five in terms of what movies have gotten the most nominations. Velvet Underground has actually been doing pretty well. We could see something like The Lost Leonardo or Becoming Costo get in here, maybe. I don't really have much of a strong case to make for anything else. I feel like this top five is leaving me feeling pretty good. You should feel good. You know, it's good to feel good and you deserve that. Animated film, for some reason, they're doing only four nominees. And Kanto, Mitchell's Flea Luca. Who, who's not doing this top four? Who's not know. doing that? Everyone's doing this top four. It's pretty fucking obvious and it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen too. And those are our predictions for the 2022 BAFTA nominations. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Do you know anyone on the jury?